Now, I'm saying all of that because as a man of God, I was out winning souls. I was happy as I could be. My wife and I were having a time watching drug addicts, gangsters, born again. Born again. And one day the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to begin writing a political blog. I said, no. I don't belong in that swamp. I got my own swamp. And you know what was amazing is I told God I would not write that blog. And he told me this. He said, I asked someone else to do it and they said no. Are you going to tell me no also? And you see, you'll be destroyed, the Amplified Version said, because you didn't help when you could have helped. So I said, how do I do this? He said, are you against drugs? I said, yes. He said, are you against gang violence? And the Lord said, now the worst gang in the ghetto is not MS-13, Bloods, or Crips. It's a political party. They are the worst gang in the hood. And this political party that will remain unnamed because I think you've got a higher IQ than, a, than an eggplant. <laughs> has destroyed the inner city. And he said now, now that a political party is the most violent gang in the hood, are you going to stop preaching against gangs? Now that the worst drug in the hood is not crack cocaine, but socialism. I know I just said that, didn't I? I, I didn't give you the name of the political party, but I did go use the S word, didn't I? America is under attack. I want you to look at me. America is under attack. And you're going to wonder why I'm bringing this up. Am I trying to depress you? Promise. Fasten your seatbelt. We're about to go somewhere. Let me tell you something. You can't get away with singing this stuff you sang today without saying in logical conclusion, you know what that song meant? You know what? When we said nothing is impossible, God never met anything that was impossible. You know what? You're telling me this church is not just a church. This is not just a meeting. This is not just a get together. God is raising up an army. God. God is raising up an army to take this country back from the hands of the devil. Yeah. Yeah. I like it when you do that. That feels good. I want you to meet my wife. I want her to stand up right now. I'm madly in love with this girl right there. That's my one. So they hate Christians now. Wow. You know, one of my fantasies is to have a shot at these university professors who are so open-minded their brains have fallen out. <laughs> so the Lord said, I want you to write a blog. I immediately began to write a blog exposing the political corruption in the United States. Exposing the double standard against the church, exposing what they were doing to our children with curriculum and the mass indoctrination in the, in the country. 
And so when I did that, doors to the church slammed shut. And you know, there's one benefit to getting older. You don't give a rip who likes you and who doesn't like you. That's what I'm, no. You are not welcome in our church anymore. And I went, ooh. I almost felt that. <laughs> Do you know that that blog was a national phenomenon. Not at first, but as of today, it is approaching 17 million views. Yeah. It's how our tent crusades blew up. It's how I ended up on Flashpoint. It's how I met Lance Wall now. And uh, so, as you can see, I've recovered from the shock of the churches that rejected me. <laughs> the Bible tells us that in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, the tribes of Judah, the tribes of Israel, rather, and it tells us their weaponry, what they were good at fighting, how they were skilled. And it's an interesting thing. It's so far ahead of its time. It's almost like this was written in Silicon Valley, not in the Old Testament. Because it says that Reuben and Judah and all of the tribes and the weapons they were good at using and their skill sets. Then it came to a weapon that is at least 4,000 years from being relevant to the world. The, the, the weapon of information. Men, the tribe of Issachar that understood the times and what Israel should do. This is Google before Google. <laughs> and it will be after Google. And it was a skill set to know the times and what we should do. Now, there's something that Satan wants. Look at me. There's something that Satan wants in the American church. Because he, I love this word, bamboozled us. It just feels good. You've not just been fooled. That man is no good for you. That man, you should run from him as if he were nuclear waste. That man has bamboozled you. I just love the way it sounds. And the church began to build empires for itself and agree with the Johnson Amendment that we shouldn't be politically involved. And the Bible tells us how to know that's wrong. By their fruits you will know them. And wisdom is confirmed by our children. The prayer ban was allowed because the church felt that it couldn't comment. The church allowed Roe v. Wade to be created because we didn't believe it was our place to push back on immorality in America. And so the devil said, you know what? As long as I can run into the temple of politics, the church can't shoot at me. Well, one day God woke me up and said, aim your weapon straight at it right now. Because now it is legal. Somebody said amen. Now, you know, I have a lot to say, but I'm going to be careful. It's my first time with you, and I don't think, want you to think I just talk for hours but I, I'm going to tell you the time we're in and what 
my point is, and I got to get to this, and please help me, uh, by focusing on the sons of Issachar, the time that we're in, and what we should do. Those songs were too dangerous today. Too dangerous. But the problem with much of the beautiful songs and the powerful words is that for me, those words represent a drug addict coming to Christ, a wheelchair being empty, a blind eye being healed. So for me, this is not virtual reality. It's not me getting an induced emotion by a lyric. Like for example, we sing, there is an army rising up, right? Never seen an army take so long to rise up. And we sing it to the degree that we confuse singing an army's rising up with raising up an army. I'm not here to sing, there's an army rising up. I'm here to raise up an army. Somebody said amen. We're going to turn these lyrics into reality. When we say dry bones rise up, dead people rise up, we're no longer going to do it in the safety of a church building, but we're going to go out and get them and bring them in and watch the heroin addict and watch the prostitute rise up out of a grave. How many of you want to do it? Do you?